All right, right here we have three vectors in an xy plane. What we're going to do today is explore the three different methods for multiplying using vectors. So here I am writing down what we have for our three vectors and then we're going to multiply by a scalar. Now when we multiply by a scalar, if we do 3 times c, it will simply be that scalar times the vector. In other words, we'll get 3 times negative 4i, which will be negative 12i. Keep in mind that when multiplying by a scalar, we change the magnitude of the vector itself, but we do not change its direction. Its direction remains constant, we just change its magnitude. Now, when we go on to the dot product, the dot product is also known as the scalar product, and a times b is equal to a b cosine theta, and that is the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the cosine of the angle between them. What we're actually finding is a dot b, you're taking the component of a in the direction of b and multiplying those two things together. Alternately, you could imagine you're taking the component of B in the direction of A and multiplying those together. And our answer, as stated, is a scalar. So when you multiply the two together, you end up with a scalar. This is most often used in terms of work when force and displacement are in different directions. We uh, Last year, you would have said FD cosine theta. Uh, this year you'll do force dot displacement and you'll get answer as a scalar. So if we do a dot b, what we're going to end up with is a in the x direction times b in the x direction plus a in the y direction times b in the y direction plus a in the z direction times b in the z direction. Basically we multiply each component's we multiply AX times BX, add it to AY times BY, and add it to AZ times BZ. So A dot B is 45. With that, B dot A will also be 45. It's a scalar. Now finally we get to the cross product. The cross product is equal to A the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times sine theta. Now with vectors, we're not going to use that very much, um, but this is how we're going to set it up. First we're going to write a matrix with directions, i, j, and k across the top, and then the x, y, and z values of a first and then b second, that is our first term and then our second term. And with this, we're going to write a, y, times BZ minus AZ times BY. What we're going to end up doing is crossing out AX, if we're looking in the I direction, we're crossing out AX and BX, and we're crossing out J and K. Then we add the diagonal down and to the right, AY times BZ, and subtract the diagonal in the other direction, AZ times BY. That's in the I direction. Now, because of the way we're doing this, the j direction will be negative. So we're going to subtract the j direction, and we're going to cross out a, y, and b, y, and i, and k. So we'll be left with a matrix a, x, a, z, b, x, and b, z. Once again, down and to the right. So AX times BZ minus AZ times BX in the J direction. The K direction, we're doing the same cross. We come up here. Then we're going to just uh, do the math. And in the I and J direction, because this is only in the XY plane, the I and J direction are both zero. So we're going to end up with an answer only in the k direction. Keep in mind that when you do the cross product, the resultant follows the right-hand rule and is perpendicular to both vectors. 
So next, we're going to pick a couple of vectors, picked at random, and we're going to add them, subtract them, take the dot product, and take the cross product. And then finally, we're going to find the angle using the dot product. So, first things first, when we add them, A plus B. Create the page again. When we add them together, we're just taking the x values, adding them together, 3 plus 4, the y values, adding them together, and the z values. And then we come up with an answer, 7i, negative 1j, and in this case, 7 plus 2, 9k. a minus b is you subtract, you take ax minus bx and continue on, and then Right now, we've already gone to the dot product. A dot B is 3 times 4, the x value is multiplied, plus multiply the y values, 5 times negative 6, and then multiply the z values, 7 times 2. When you add each of those together, you end up with negative 4. B times A, we ended up with negative 4 as well. Finally, to find the angle between them. The magnitude of A is I take the x value squared, the y value squared, and the z value squared, take the square root of that. That is Pythagorean theorem in three dimensions. It works just like Pythagorean theorem in two dimensions. So the magnitude of A is 9.11 and the magnitude of B is 7.48. Now, considering that A dot B equals the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times cosine theta, we can solve for the angle between them. That is cosine theta equals A dot B divided by the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B. And when we do that all together, we take the the inverse cosine of that, we get 93.36 degrees. And then finally, we're going to pull a new page out for the cross product. We'll get that down, and we're going to first do A cross B. We're going to set our, our matrix, I, J, and K, and 3, 5, and 7, and 4, negative 6, and 2 are our X, Y, and Z values. So I is 5 times 2 minus 7 times negative 6. J is 3 times 2 minus 7 times negative 4. That value is negative. And the K term is 3 times negative 6 minus 5 times 4 in the K value. What we're going to end up with is 52I plus 22J minus 38K. When we take b dot a, we should come up with the same vector, but in the opposite direction. So, so we'll see how that happens. We're going to set up our same matrix again, but instead, the b terms will be above the a terms, and that's going to make all the difference. So we're still going to do uh, set everything up. Remember, the j term is negative. Set it all up, and what we're going to find is we find the exact same vector, but in the negative direction. I certainly hope this helps, and uh, good luck.